In this video, we're going to go over the use of the Interactions Management Panel that is located on the left-hand side of your Skylight desktop. Obviously, your Skylight desktop is divided into a few different sections. We're going to be focusing just here on the left-hand side and the options for how they work. You'll notice that before uh, starting this video, we've gone through and put three different interactions into the Interactions Management Panel. I have a phone interaction, and two different chat interactions. So right away you'll notice that you can click on these different interaction types inside the panel. And as you click on each one, the middle screen and even the right screen will change so that the information is pertinent to the kind of interact interaction we're facing. So in a phone call, I've got some information about the phone call. In a chat, I have the chat window in the middle. When I click on the phone interaction, you'll notice that I do have a lot of different operations I could perform on the phone interaction. In this case, I could mute the caller by hitting the mute button here and unmute them by hitting the button again. I could put that caller on hold by hitting the pause button here and take them off of hold by hitting the pause button a second time. I could go through and transfer a caller by clicking on the transfer button. You'll notice that I could either send a blind transfer by hitting the transfer button and if I were to select a particular queue, say like the Mars queue, with a blind transfer the call would be immediately transferred into that queue and I would be returned to the agent pool for the next available interaction. If I do add participant, that's how we would do a warm transfer or a conference transfer. So if I were to select add participant and select the Mars queue, then I would place the original caller on hold. I would dial into the Mars queue. I would talk with an agent in the Mars queue. And then when she or he was ready, I would connect the caller through to the agent who answered me when I talked to the Mars queue. Likewise, you could, by adding participants, create a conference with two, three, four, five, or even more participants in a live conference with you. We don't really have a defined limit in the platform. Uh, we generally test for 20 conference participants or less. That's not really a defined limit. Uh, we believe the API could scale much higher than 20, but obviously we don't find most contacts in our use cases need more than about 20 people in a conference for the conference use case itself. You'll also notice that you can hit a dial pad button to send digits on the call. If for example, you needed to press one, on a call, or if you wanted to uh, dial an external phone number that you didn't have in the transfer or participant list, you can click on the dial pad down here and say, I'm gonna add a new participant or transfer the caller, and I'm gonna do it exactly or directly to this particular phone number. Now keep in mind that CX Engage is a worldwide telephony platform, so we do ask for a formal country code, even on US phone numbers, so plus one, and then your phone number means this is dialed as a US number, but you could just as easily say plus 44 and type in a UK number or other countries. Again, all countries are kind of simultaneously on the CX Engage system. You'll also notice that we do have different kinds of icons on the interactions on the left-hand side. A phone icon will show up as this little microphone icon. You'll notice that I see the time that I have been talking to this call. So this here is not the time the call has been in the system. Instead, it is the time that I have been talking to the caller. Likewise, this little chat bubble is what you see if I have a chat interaction, and this is the amount of time this chat has been active and online with me. And obviously, here's another chat, which I can tell by the chat icon, which is a little bit of a shorter duration even. An email will show up as a little envelope icon, so you can very easily see where you are inside the environment. Notice that you also get information about the contact. In this case, on a phone call, I can receive the caller ID of the individual in question. If I had a particular contact I was talking to, which maybe I've selected a contact through the Skylight CRM integration on the right-hand side, which again is not part of this demonstration, but we would invite you to see our Skylight CRM demonstration for more information about this. But if I have either selected a Skylight CRM contact or if I recognize the caller by phone number, then this field here becomes the name of the contact and the caller ID is moved to a subsequent or lesser field. Likewise, on a phone call, I can determine the flow 
or in other words, the routing plan that the call came in on. And I can determine the queue name, or in other words, uh, which option they selected, or if they were a VIP member because I identified them based upon their contact profile or a CRM entry, I could route them into that particular queue. Note that we can allow agents to request or not request wrap up. That is a setting each agent can select. If we do have wrap up active and either the caller hangs up or the agent hangs up on the call, an agent is then directed into a wrap up status. Our wrap up status gives you two options. We support your ability to tell agents about a recommended time for wrap up versus an absolute time for wrap up. So in this case, I've told my agents that look, on average, I want you to take less than 30 seconds to wrap up. And so as this ticks down from that first 30 seconds down to zero, you'll notice that all the indicators are blue. And then after this, I give the agents one more additional period at which point that wrap up goes into a red indicator. You've kind of gone past that initial wrap up time. You'll notice that in this case, uh, the script is marked as pending. That is because I chose to offer a script to my agents and I chose to give that script two different pages. So I'm just kind of going through and hitting submit on the first page and the second page of the script shows up down here. It's important to note that you don't need to put a script on every interaction in the platform, that that is something you can configure on an interaction by interaction basis.